Okay. Okay. As uh, as he's been uh, as he's been doing, uh, the Ramchal, he's been always saying a parak or two about what the mida is, and then we'll usually have a parak related to how to acquire it. So uh, just to review a little bit for those who uh, couldn't make it the last few times, we we're talking about the mida of tahara. Tahara is purity in terms of a person's machshava, in terms of how we think when we, there's two facets to it. One is when we do mundane things, let's say when we eat. So what do we think about when we eat? Are we thinking, so the ideal, meaning Tara, the, the madriga of Tara is you're thinking I'm eating because I need this to serve Hashem. I don't want to take anything more. I don't need anything more than that, but a certain pure kavana when you're doing something mundane to do it for the sake of Hashem. And when we perform mitzvahs to make sure to do the mitzvah lishma for the sake of Hashem. We discuss different categories of low lishma, but Tara, when it comes to uh, when the should be lishma. So now he says as follows, how do we, how do we acquire this? Me'aderach lahasig hamida zos, kalhu l'misha kfar hishtada v'isig hamidos hashnuos adhina. He says, it's actually relatively easy to acquire it, assuming you've acquired all the other ones prior, right? So assuming you have a person who, remember, like, think about all the things we've done, right? A person who never sins, never sins even within the minutia of the details of sinning, a person who always obviously does the mitzvahs asse, a person who is uh, who is careful. We spoke about uh, spoke about chas- about precious, a person who removes all physicality that's unnecessary from their life, right? So he says, once you've acquired that kind of stuff, this is it's relatively easy, and it kind of it makes sense. There's obviously there's a progression, and he's working off all this whole safer. The Midos are working off uh, a brisa that that has a progression. So once you've acquired that, of course, your machshava should be tahar. Says kihine continues kihine sheyashuv yisbonin al chisus tanuge olam b'tovosav. When you think about the lowliness of the the physical world, and and you think about. You think about the the benefits also of the physical world. As I as I as I wrote earlier, meaning there are certain times, of course, a person we discussed how the mamare chazal about how a person should indulge and get. I don't say indulge, but certain should get the pleasures of the world, and so that's referring to how we we need to live and we need to engage in the physical world. So that's the tovosav and the chisos, the lowliness is to overindulge. As I wrote above, that a person should be despised in a certain sense by the physical nature of the world, by the uh, the physical pleasures and the benefits. I say benefit, the physical pleasures and and it should it should uh, that they're actually they're actually let me say we defines it here. That it's uh they're dark and they're uh, they're coarse. He says, "Here's the that's the definition it gives here. Uh, that's not something good. It's not something that's beneficial to a person's life." Um, just uh, to give a practical example for a negative thing that I do, um, and I might do after this year. So I happen to wait three hours between uh, meat and dairy. Um, it is a uh, family custom, Baruch Hashem. Uh, it happens to be on an uh, interesting side note. Um, I was, I've contemplated at points whether to switch over to six hours, which certainly uh, uh, is the majority of opinions, overwhelming majority of opinions. When I was in Smicha, so a little bit, I guess, a little bit post Smicha. Um, is it post Smicha? Yeah, around like, around Smicha time, either way. Um, I recorded uh, my first album and I called it Mizmar Ledavid. And the opinion, the source for why someone could wait three hours is from a safer, Ms. Marla David. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> kind of like, I felt that was like my stamp of approval from Hashem. That like, I could, I could keep three, I could continue the minhag. Um, either way, I bring that up now. 
because it is possible that after this year, um, it has been after by the end of this year in about 10 point minutes, it'll be three hours after I have meat and I might have some ice cream. Now, am I really hungry? No, I'm not really hungry, but do I want it? Yes. Now that's not, I'm not speaking proudly of this, um, but I'm just giving an example of like something you would say where it's like, why would a person do this? A person certainly, certainly this is unnecessary. And a person ideally, and the ideal thing, and there are times where I do think about it and I might not have it afterwards. I don't know if I will or won't. Um, I can tell you over the past week or two, there are plenty of times where at nine, 10 o'clock, if I had an early dinner, I would have, have something to eat. Um, but uh, he continues on with Ames et Slo. He says, um, once a person is like is convinced and recognizes the the what's lacking in this, the fact that there's something wrong with just purely engaging in physical world, even though I'm going to eat ice cream, I certainly meaning I I recognize that that we don't want to be over invested in the physical world, and we want to do matters of kedusha. So he says, he says it's easy. Remember, we're discussing the how to acquire this mida. So he says you acquire it by being able to think about how the physical world is unnecessary. And it almost it's 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 things that take you away from serving Hashem. Like la sir and it'll be easier to remove this from your heart. Um meaning the desire to, to gain, gain all these pleasures when you recognize this. Um, just something, not exactly exactly tied to this, but just something I think about at times. I happen to, I enjoy football. Um, now that I don't even have a TV and I don't have like the ability to like watch the games typically, like I might watch some highlights. Uh, it's not necessarily so challenging for me. Um, I probably will watch this here. Well, not positive, I probably will. Uh, but either way, um, I certainly in my life have seen, I would say, hundreds of games. And after I became more religious, I remember thinking, having this thought, I remember if I heard this from my Rebbe or not, but I remember thinking that like one football game, I'm pretty sure I did hear this from my Rebbe, that like, imagine just like sitting down and watching a game, you could enjoy it. And it's good. There's times to enjoy things like this, but there is zero schar at, involved. Right, overall, you're not you're not serving Hashem by sitting down and watching that. And we could spend hours. We could spend thousands of hours, and we do, unfortunately, doing things that are just so neutral. Meaning, right now, is this stage in the sales of Sharm, We're not discussing necessarily like don't do sins, right? We're we're way, way past that. We're discussing uh, recognize the things that we view as neutral and realize that they're not necessarily neutral. They're actually, they could be negative. They could take away, right? They're negative because they take away from what you, we should be doing. Um, so I just, I just have that recognition. It's hard for me to, uh, to not think about that at, at times. Uh, not say the goal is to try to, to you, you could enjoy football and you could watch and uh, enjoy it for, for what you can and for what you need. Uh, but to be realistic about for yourself, that, uh, about that. So he continues, Alkin, Kol Mashi Yamik Yasmir Lahakir, the Chisas Acham Rios Betanugav. But therefore, the more person thinks deeply about these things and about how the physical pleasures of this world are, are lowly, he says, Yoter Yenaka Lola Tar So it's going to be much easier to have proper intention to, to focus a person's thoughts better when you're, when you're eating. Just use that example. Uh, and that a person should then not give in to the Yitzhahara when they're when they're doing these actions. Um, says that the actions that a person does that we have to in, be involved in the physical world, it should be almost like we're coerced to, almost like we're forced to, like we have no choice. Lolozos, there's no other reason for that. Like I'll just use, uh, I think this is a, is a pretty uh, practical example, right? We have to work, 
every single one of us has to have a job. We have to earn money for our families. And maybe ideally, yeah, we would want to sit and learn. Certainly, ideally, we should sit sit and learn, and or not just learn, be involved in learn, serving Hashem and doing mitzvot, but we can't. So he says it's kind of like this, where, where we're doing it, why? Not because I want to sit and be an accountant, right? But it's, I need to make money, right? It's this idea of honest, like I'm forced to, like I have to do this, but I, I really would, I would like to learn. I would like to have more time learning. And so he says that that mentality should be applied to other areas of life, areas of pleasure, uh, of where we, we, have to, we have to eat, we have to stay alive. We're forced to eat. What are we going to do about it? We're not, we're not a malach who could survive uh, without eating, right? This week's Parsha, Parsha Yisro. So Moshe Rabbeinu on Har Sinai. So we're told that Moshe and Mamish didn't eat uh, when he went up 40 days. Mamish didn't eat. So when he's in the land of the angels, so he's able to act like a malach and not eat. But uh, we are, unfortunately, uh, we are not the Madriga Moshe Rabbeinu. We are not a Har Sinai. And uh, we, have to, we have to eat. So it should be almost uh, like we're forced to. The Amnam, however, just like when it came to the machshava, it's broken down into two different sections. We spoke about uh, the first is the physical pleasures, meaning that's what I refer to as like the neutral things, the pleasures that we get in the world when it comes to eating, drinking, working, whatever. But and the second is when it comes to the service of Hashem, how we should think when we serve Hashem. It says, therefore, when it comes to acquiring this midah of having a proper machshava, having proper kavana when you serve Hashem, so we have to bifurcate it into these two different categories. That when it comes to having proper kavana within the physical world, so the, the way to do this is to constantly remember and think about the lowliness of the pleasures in the physical world. As I wrote about. Meaning, the Chiddush, the, I think the Chiddush he's saying here is that the, the word lahasmid, the fact that it should be something we think about a lot. Meaning, Sometimes you will learn something, like right now we're learning it. We're thinking about it conceptually right now. It might make sense. Yeah, I don't need this ice cream after this year. Definitely not, right? And hopefully maybe I'll sink it. Maybe I won't, whatever, maybe. Um, but whatever the example is, certainly we certainly overindulge overall as a society uh, in the physical world. And it's not just learning it, but it's constantly thinking about it. The more we constantly think about it, uh, the better we're going to be. Think about a person who wants to, wants to be on a diet and they want to lose weight. Now, obviously in your home, you want to have Gidart, right? You don't want to buy, have tons of Ben and Jerry's and Haggadahs in the freezer. It's going to make it a lot more difficult for you to succeed. But let's say a person's, a person's, uh, a person's house is fine, but they go off, they're going to, to work and they, they go out to buy lunch every day. They're going to buy lunch and they're at this restaurant. There's tons of stuff, full menu. Some things healthy and most things unhealthy. So when it comes to that, the person to be successful has to constantly remember, I'm on a diet. I have a goal of losing 25 pounds. I have a streak of eating healthy for X amount of days. I have to do this, right? So it's not just of, I want to die. And you're thinking about that when you start and that's it. And then you try to just like eat what's in your house, right? You have to constantly work at it, constantly be thinking about it in order to succeed. So too, uh, so too here, a person has to constantly think about um, the physical pleasures and, and how it's not something that's, that's necessary. And it's something that we should almost be like, oh, you know, fortunately I, I have to eat or I have to, have to do this. Um, maybe that's uh, too high for us, but certainly to recognize that I don't need to overindulge. I don't need to have that third uh, portion or that second or third portion, whatever it may be for you, that's clearly too much. Like, you know, I'm good. Maybe for us, it could be at our Madriga. Like I said, it's always take away for our Madriga to, to, to eat, what, eat what you need and to not overeat. Or to, yeah, you can think about for yourself what's, what's uh, realistic. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. 
I'm trying to see where we are here. Okay. He says, when it comes to, remember, so that was how to purify our machshava when it comes to the physical world. When it comes to serving Hashem in our avoda, so you have to constantly think about the fact that you want to fight against kavod. That uh, the the set here is just kind of like this, the deceptive nature of earthly covered and how how it's false. As you know, today so we do some knows. Sorry, sorry. The argal asmal the brachim and to and to flee from that. Meaning, what he's going to say here is that oftentimes, um, when it comes to us Hashem's, so even if a person is doing the mitzvos, sometimes we do them for honor. Sometimes, like you gave an example in weeks past about you're giving stuck on part of it is that, you know, there's a person there and I want to make sure that he sees that I'm giving. It's not the reason I'm giving, but that's a component maybe, right? Or I want to make sure that, that, uh, that like, sometimes it's positive peer pressure, right? Sometimes it's like, oh, I'm in a firm community and there's a shear going on. I want to make sure that people know that I learned, so let me go to the shear, right? Whatever it may be. Um, but but nonetheless, that's not necessarily the most proper kavana. But he says there are plenty of times where a person does these things for kavod. And wow, well, look at that guy. Wow, he always comes to the shir. He's always the, the has the longest one essay. And so even if the person does have longest one essay, but to do it for the the kavod of being told that you have long or that people they might not say to you, but you know that they're speaking. Wow, look, he has the longest one essay. He's always there even when the lights go out. Whatever it may be, he says to recognize that human honor is false. That the real, the only covers, we'll say shortly, the only real cover is from Hashem. Hashem praises us and those that like, oh, you're doing the right thing. But um, but uh, it says, Az yinaked mitnos el halu adam. That person in their voda um, should steer away from the praise of people. And the only the only kavod and uh, praise should be the praise of Hashem. Who called to And there's nothing else that's good. There's nothing else that that matters other than the kavod of Hashem. As the pasuk in says, um, He is your praise and He is your God. Um, the footnote points out here that there's a machloka, which is interesting, about who the subject is here. And it's interesting to think about this, that one could be that the way I was saying it until now, maybe, is that we care about Hashem's praise, that Hashem praising us. Meaning, I don't care that you're going to tell me you're going to be proud that I'm doing X. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think. But what does matter is what Hashem thinks of me. So that's one thing. Another side says, no, you know what this Pasuk is talking about? When we say Hashem's praise matters, it's that us praising Hashem. That's the true kavod. The greatest honor is us honoring Hashem. And that's what matters. It doesn't matter about us getting honor. It matters about us giving honor and uh, everyone giving honor to Hashem, who certainly uh, certainly deserves that. Um, that was the second understanding was the, the Ramban, that us, it's about us giving honor to Hashem. And the first understanding about us being, getting honor only from Hashem, that was the opinion of the Sforno. Okay. Okay, I see where we are, sorry. Umin hamaisim hamadrichim esa adam lavoli de midazo. And among the practices that, that guide a person to get to this midah, who has mana the divrei havoda via mitzvos. So it's specifically about the preparation for it, right? There's a concept in kedusha v'leachana. You can't really attain kedusha if you're not preparing for it, right? It says, That a person shouldn't just run into a mitzvah um, and, and not really prepared for it. 
and not where your mind is at ease. We're not able to really focus on what you're doing. Um, it's pointed out, um, heard pointed out, there's a very big difference between coming, I, I can use the an extreme. An extreme would be, there's a big difference between coming 10 seconds early to Marit and coming 10 seconds late to Marit. Right, coming 10 seconds early is like, okay, you're there a few seconds, then you hear, like, okay, you're gathered, your thoughts, you're kind of there. Coming 10 seconds late, they're up to the second paragraph there, and you're like, oh, and you're like fumbling, like rushing the first paragraph, mumbling the words. There's a huge difference between the, that 20 second gap, the total difference of 20 seconds. One could argue five seconds. Certainly, 30 seconds is huge, right? Imagine coming 30 seconds early, a minute early, and you're able to just like sit to your seat before they start, versus coming a minute late and they started Shema. Mash, a world's difference. And just our ability to prepare, even in such small, a small way really could uh, transform the way we serve Hashem and transform that mitzvah that we're about to do. Ella, he says, what should a person do? A person is able to come, a person is able to think and prepare for what they're about to do. And he says, two things you should think about. Think about what you're going to do. Ma holy chlasos, like I'm about to put on tefillin. Let me realize I'm about to put on tefillin. A mitzvah of tefillin is given to Ben Hashem that has mamish sections of the Torah written on cloth about our love for Hashem, and Hashem's love, Hashem, really, uh, yeah, our love for Hashem in them. And, uh, and then the next part to think, for me, me, who holy chlasos, who am I doing this for? Uh, the nefesh hachayim when he speaks about learning Torah, and uh, certainly Chaim Velazhner was a pretty serious uh, student of Torah. So uh, he says, at times a person should stop and, and speak or think, if you're with someone, you could speak about it, if you're by yourself, stop and think, why am I doing this? If you're not focused on the purpose, the ultimate purpose of what you're doing, then stop and just take second, a few seconds to think about that. That's what he's saying here. When you're going to perform mitzvah, stop. Think about what you're about to perform, the chashivas of the mitzvah, and think about who you're performing it for. Sharebi konso bi'iyun hazeh. And uh, when a person is, uh, is able to, to actually stop and think in this fashion and uh, pause, kal hu shiyashlich me'elav hapniyos hachitonos. Then, it becomes much easier to remove the external motivations from him. Um, sorry, I apologize. I just don't want to, uh, want to make sure you know where we are. Uh, here we are. Then you're going to attain the proper kavana of that's fitting for the mitzvah. So remember, the whole, the difficulty when it comes to serving Hashem is the fact that you're thinking, oh, what's that guy going to think? And all the ex external motivations that a person has. I just spoke about the mitzvah lishma. It's hard to totally do a mitzvah, totally lishma, to not have any ulterior motives. So he says, the best way to focus on this, to work on Tara, is to think, what am I doing and why am I doing it? And if you think about that, and then you take a few seconds to think about that, and then you perform a mitzvah, then it becomes much easier to do it without any ulterior motives. It says, Vitira, and you should know. See, we don't have so much more, don't worry. This much left for the pair. Um, Vitira, you should know. Since uh, Gemara and Brachos, it's going to say in the Alphabet on base, uh, that the Hasidim, the early, uh, the pious ones, they went to Shul, they got there an hour early. I'm not sure if they were mamish meditating or they were learning how to say their before or they were thinking about preparing for tefillah and whatever way it was. But what were they doing? That they have, that they, their kavana is, and their hearts are towards Hashem. The focus on what they're about to do. Certainly, they weren't just wasting away an hour. They were focusing and thinking and preparing on the till they were about to daven. 
and they were pushing away the foreign thoughts that removed them from being able to serve Hashem best, and they were focusing on the Ava and Yira that was necessary to perform the mitzvah of Tila. The Omer, as it says in Eo, which uh, means if you would prepare your heart and spread forth your hands to him, your fear would be brighter than the, than the noon is the way the Pasuk ends. When it comes to spreading your hands like this, that's referring to the, the early ways that people daven with their, their palms out to Hashem. So if you just prepare your heart when it comes to davening, the place says uh, you should do. The, the factors that detract us from being able to focus on this, it's not thinking. It's not taking the time to contemplate this stuff. The hainu, that if you're not focusing, if you're not thinking about the lowliness of the physical pleasures of the world, and if you're making sure to not run after, after honor, and uh, if a person is uh, does insufficient uh, preparation for serving Hashem, uh, to, 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 if you if you have if you're not doing those three components properly, then you're not going to get this. It's going to be much more difficult to attain. The first two, uh, recognizing the lowliness of the physical world and not running after kavod. So uh, he says those two. Those two draw a person for like personal interest, right? You want the physical pleasure. You want the kavod. Like a woman who, who takes people to commit adultery. Um, and that's why a foreign thought is referred to as znus halev, like znus, like promiscuity, promiscuity of the heart. So it's taking away from what you should be, just like husband and wife and say should be together, we should be connected to Hashem. And so if we have something else that we're focusing on that's detracting from that relationship, I think that's that's the concept here. It's like a, like a committing an affair in a certain sense to Hashem. The same as it says in Bamidbar Tevav Alamitet, so a pasuk that we know uh, by heart at the end of Shema. They should not, uh, you shouldn't veer after your, after your heart and after your eyes. That uh, and should be drawn after them. Uh, that find that our heart are sometimes can be turned away from the ideal outlook. Asher haya loli kasherbo, that a person should be connected to. El ha'avolim v'adim yono kozim. And we're removed from them. We're sometimes drawn towards things that are total, mamsha, total waste. Umiyot ha'achana gorim l'sichlos ha'tivi haba mitzad ha'chomer shalo yigrosh mitocho. And that insufficient preparation um, before performing a mitzvah causes a person uh, he quotes, he says it here, translated as like natural foolishness that uh, stems from our, our yitzah heart that draws us towards physicality. And, and uh, the presence of this, this foolishness, this like, like thinking that, oh, the, thinking about the physical pleasure, thinking about this, something that's clearly not Kedusha, that's going to taint our service. Of Hashem and it's going to cause it to rot. And we're now going to go explain um, in the the next parak the mida of the mida of Hasidus, um, which is certainly uh, sounds high and is and is high um, for sure. Okay, Hashem.